have not yet already. Uh, we also will be doing a little website tutorial. So over the past several years, we've uh, gotten several questions from towns, which is amazing, and we're learning some of the needs of communities and where we can provide more information. So we wanted to do a walkthrough of some of those big website questions that we always get so that we're all on the same page and know that this session will be recorded and you can go back to an go back to the session and, and see anything that you missed, but we'll also be here if you have any specific questions about your municipal dashboard or other, and we can just walk through that together live, which is the beauty of Zoom. So before we dig into the, the formal programming, just want to give other sustainable CT staff here on the line a chance to introduce themselves. So I'm looking over at Torin, who is the first one on the Zoom. So Torin, who are you? Good morning, Sustainable CT family. My name is Torin Radicioni. I am Sustainable CT's website manager. And after today's presentation, I hope that you'll actually appreciate and actually like what I do. If not, I completely understand. But anyways, it's nice to meet you. Awesome. Thanks, Torin. And I wish I could have like a drum roll app because we have a brand new staff person started. Was it this week, Chad? No, it was the seventh. No, it was this week. I don't know, time is flying, it feels like you've been here forever. We have a Chad Schroeder who's returning as a two-year fellow. So he was a two-time fellow at the West Cog. He's now a full-time staff person here at Sustainable CT. We're so glad to have him. And I'm gonna let you introduce yourself, Chad. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Chadwick Schroeder. I'm the new program assistant for Sustainable CT. I'm excited to be here and meet you all today and help you with the program. Yeah, we're so lucky to have Chad back. Um, all right, so first things first, we wanted to let everyone meet the fellows. So some of you have already met the fellow working at your particular council of governments. Maybe you haven't yet, but we thought today would be a great opportunity to see the fellows, hear a bit about their academic backgrounds, where they are. And if you haven't yet reached out to your fellow, you know, this could be a good segue to do so. So Every summer, we have young people, graduate and undergraduate students, out at the various councils of government, providing direct support to you, to communities who are registered, helping you figure out your sustainability base, helping you upload application materials, helping you do actions, get things sorted, whatever it is that you've got going on. Uh, we're so appreciative of you, the town, providing fellows opportunities to dig in and really you know, help move that certification process forward. Whether or not certification is a goal, even if you just want to plug away at some actions, the fellows can be there to provide that direct support. Um, so we hope that you're giving them lots of projects and keeping them very busy over the next couple of months. But we wanted first just to let you meet them. And we've got that capability here with Zoom, so we're taking advantage of that. So we've got a bunch of fellows on the line. And to avoid any weird popcornness, I'm just going to say your name, and then if you want to introduce yourself briefly, we'll kind of go from there. So in no particular order, I see Sophia up first. So Sophia, who are you? Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet you. I'm Sophia. Um, I'm from Glastonbury, Connecticut. I'm a rising junior at UConn studying music and political science, and I'm really excited to learn about local government and policy development through the fellowship program at Sustainable CT, and I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Sophia. And next on my Zoom box is I see Reese. Hello, everybody. So my name is Reese Berman. I'm from Guilford, Connecticut. I'm a rising junior at Virginia Tech studying environmental policy and planning with a minor in ecological cities. And this summer I'm working in the Southeastern Council of Government. What I hope to uh, learn this summer is um, to work with different towns of and uh, collaborating with them and how to implement sustainability practices. Cool, thanks Reese. I'm looking at Allie now. Hi, I'm Allie. Um, I'm from Danbury, Connecticut. <laughs> Hi, Margaret. <laughs> um, I'll be working with the Northwest Hills COG. Um, I've already met some of you on the line. Um, I am going to grad school at Southern Connecticut and my focus is on environmental studies, specifically um, policy and stakeholder engagement. Thanks, Allie. And Adrian. Good morning, everyone. My name is Adrian, and I'm from Derby, Connecticut, and I'm working with the Naugatuck Valley COG. 
and I am a rising sophomore at Tufts University in Massachusetts, and I'm planning to major in Applied Environmental Studies, and my interests are waste management, climate change, and sustainability, and I'm excited to meet you all. Cool, thanks, Adrian. And Megan, where are you? Oh, there's your box. Hi, good morning. I'm Megan. I'm from Buffalo, New York. I'm a rising senior at the University of New Haven, and I'm majoring in marine biology with a minor in marine affairs. And my co-fellow, Sophia, and I were matching today, and we're from River Cog. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to focus on watershed education and invasive species planning. So that's exciting to work on with some of our towns, but excited to see you all today. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. And Sean, I know I see you out here. Um, hi, my name is Sean. Um, I am from Cheshire, Connecticut. I'm working with the Capital Region COG this summer, which has been very fun so far. Um, I am going to be a senior in the fall at the University of Connecticut, studying urban and community studies and psychology on a fast track for my master's in public administration. Um, and so far, I've just been excited to kind of meet with all the towns and hear about all the really cool sustainability projects that they're doing um, and kind of I'm excited to learn more and kind of help out with those projects. Great, thanks, Sean. And Rachel, I see you over there. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm from Clinton, Connecticut, and I'm working with the Southeastern Connecticut COG this summer. I will be a junior this fall at Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and I'm studying civil engineering with a focus in transportation and sustainability, which I've already gotten to do a little bit with um, through this fellowship. So it's very exciting and it's very exciting to get to meet you all. Great, thanks Rachel and Lauren. All right, hi guys, my name is Lauren Pulaski. I'm from Shelton, Connecticut and I'm working with MB COG this summer with Adrian. Um, I'm a rising senior at the University of Connecticut and I'm getting two degrees in environmental studies and economics and hoping to go to grad school after that. Um, my interests are sustainable development and environmental planning, and I'm super excited to work with the towns this summer because it's potentially what I want to do. Great, thanks, Lauren. And we have here also Thomas. Hi, everyone. My name is Thomas. Um, I'm from Cheshire, Connecticut. I'm working at the Capital Region COG with Sean this summer. Um, I'm going to be a, rise, a sophomore at UConn studying geographic information science and economics, and it's really great to meet you all. Excellent. Thanks, Thomas. And I think that's everybody. I don't think I missed anyone. So we actually have even more fellows who weren't able to join this morning because they're probably meeting with towns, which is great and what we want them to do. So if you have or haven't connected with your fellow yet, please continue to do so or start up those conversations. You can see they're really amazing and interested in what you do. Um, so with that, I wanna just turn it over to Torin. He's gonna walk us through some website tutorials and he's got a great show, show for us. Um, but if people have any questions, pop them in the chat. We're a smaller group today, so we can be informal. You can unmute yourself and ask them too. Um, but this session is for you. So if there's something you want us to cover that we're not yet, just let us know and we can shift gears pretty easily. So Torin, it's all you. Yeah, just thank you so much. Um, yeah, before I begin, I do have a presentation prepared, but I don't want to be as rigid as we normally are during coffee hours with presentations. Um, so does anybody have any questions about the website offhand that we would want to discuss now? So it could be like a little bit informal, like feel free to unmute yourself or put them in the chat. Um, if not, I'm more than happy to just continue with what I have prepared. All right. Going once, going twice, sold. All right, I guess I'm going with the presentation I got today. Um, so let me just do a little screen share and sorry about the screen finagling. I'm used to using two screens. Here we go. And at any point, if you guys have any questions, like Jess said, feel free to put them in the chat. We're more than happy to just stop presentation at any time and give a couple of answers if necessary. So this is a little intro session about the sustainable CT website. So if anybody who may have used the website or may not be new to the website, 
at first it can seem like a really scary place. There's a lot of different things that you can do with the website regarding account registration, updating your application, um, viewing the participating communities map, finding success stories related to certain actions, the list goes on and on. Um, but this is why we're here to help. At any point at all, you have any questions about the website, please feel free to email info at sustainablect.org. Um, that email sends to every Sustainable CT staff member. And if you don't have any response for a couple of days, my personal email is in this presentation as well. Um, I'm more than happy to help you guys create some more autonomy with your application and understanding the website whenever you guys need it. <clears throat> and as always, as much as I'm paid to learn about the Sustainable CT website, um, you know, there's things in this training or this info session that I probably won't cover. Um, I want people to know that if they visit the Sustainable CT support for your town page, um, you'll be able to have physical and virtual resources that will help and assist your sustainability team, which also includes like a series of five learning modules that are about one to five minutes each, um, which really kind of debrief uh, users about our program as well as how to navigate the website. Um, I've included the link in this presentation. Um, but at any point at all you want to visit that page, just look at our top menu bar wherever you are on the website and just click on support for your town and it will take you there. <clears throat> um, so the first thing I really want to cover is creating an account with Sustainable CT. Um, it's really one of the more essential things that you need to do because it allows you to get linked to a municipal dashboard. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is visit our homepage, which is www.sustainablect.org. And when, uh, if you're registering, you're going to see on the top right hand screen, you're going to see two buttons, a sign in button and a register button. If you're registering in your municipality, you want to click register and I'll go through the steps to register your municipality in a bit. But if you're just creating an account with Sustainable CT, you just want to click the sign in button. Um, after selecting the sign in button, uh, there's a, another button on the right hand side that says sign up now where you'll be able to create your account. Um, there you should be able to input your name, email and password. And then after that, you should be able to receive a confirmation email which will confirm the creation of your account, which will then allow you to get connected to a municipal dashboard. <clears throat> Registering your municipality is a little different, especially um, you know, if you're really new to the website, you're going to need a couple things. Um, not only are you going to need to register your account, um, you're going to get uh, go through a prompt where it's going to ask for some contact information, um, as well as you uh, to provide a copy of your uh, signed resolution to participate in Sustainable CT. Um, I've had this happen before where people have actually emailed me asking to register their municipality and having the website having some issues with registration. Um, and in some cases, that's because their municipality was actually already registered. So I have a link to our participating communities map. Feel free to use that link and, and see the uh, communities that are actually participating in our program. Um, if you're having any difficulties with any of this, um, you may see that, yeah, your community is already registered in our program. Um, before I continue, um, I love to have opportunities for people to ask questions. So please feel free to ask questions before I move on. All right, it seems like we got a really quiet bunch, but that's okay. I hope you guys warm up later in the presentation. It's completely fine. I got material for you, no worries. So the next section that I really wanna cover is updating and uploading um, material to any action submission that you have on your application. <clears throat> now, in order to update your application, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is access your municipal dashboard. And there's actually two ways to do this from the homepage. <clears throat> After you sign in, you're gonna to wanna to go to either the top left next to the logo of the homepage where it says my account. And when you click my account, you'll get brought back to like this really nice welcome back page. The website missed you. It wants you to kind of work on your application again. Um, the first choice that you have in the top left corner is municipal dashboard and there when you click that button you'll be able to view your town. Um, there's also a much simpler way uh, when you sign in in the top right hand corner next to the sign out button at this point. 
um, it's just going to have a button that says dashboard. And when you click that, that's going to go to your municipal dashboard. <clears throat> so this is an issue where we encounter a lot with towns or I encounter a lot with towns. Um, users would love to get connected to their municipal dashboard, but they're not either seeing the invitation that is sent by their sustainability team member or when they click the link to the email that they receive, um, it's just not taking them or actually connecting them to the municipal dashboard. So the first thing I wanna say in terms of troubleshooting that, I would love for you to check your spam folders. Um, some email options are a lot different than others and some will take the message from sustainable CT and interpret it as spam. Um, if you're not seeing that email at all and you're not seeing it in your spam folder, I encourage you to email us at info at sustainablect.org. And if we don't get back to you in time, please email me at my personal email. Again, that's radichonyt at easternct.edu. <clears throat> and please include the name of the community you'd like to be linked to. And it also probably wouldn't hurt to include your sustainability team leader in the email as well, just so they know that you would like to get connected to your municipal dashboard. <clears throat> so when you're connected to your municipal dashboard and you view, visit your municipal dashboard, you should see your town's name towards the middle of the web page, along with four different options. Now, in order to update your application, you just want to click the little arrow that is near update application, which should take you to your town's application. Um, in order to edit the action that you're, you desire to edit, um, just simply on our, um, when you see your application, find the action that you'd like to edit and click the title of the action, which will then bring you to the action submission page. Okay, so I have a question. This is Margaret. Hi, Margaret. What's going on? <laughs> well, I'm from Litchfield, and Allie has answered my question, but I guess I'm just really nervous about it, so I'm going to ask it to you again. Okay. It's this, this particular screen, so Litchfield was approved for bronze um, this last cycle, and I have uh, an item in, I don't know, it's, it's probably four point something, but it says... Um, uh, I have feedback for it, okay? So the points didn't count for bronze. And there's in red, a note right above it where that red box would be, which says, if you change this, if you resubmit, you're gonna wipe out your points or something like that. So what I'm trying to figure out, and I asked Allie and she said, yes, she thought I had it right. I just wanna resubmit what the commentator, the comment feedback asked for. So, but yet I look over to the right under certification criteria and it's checked for bronze. I don't want it to go to bronze. I want it to go to silver. I don't want to resubmit it for bronze. So what do I do? Just click silver and then put in the information that my feedback wants or do I just leave the check on bronze and resubmit it Do so margaret that's a really awesome question especially the fact that you're really into using the calculator on the right hand side so that little checkbox do you see where this the silver checkbox is yes when you click that silver checkbox that's only going to update the top corner of the top box where it says required priority and points and that's the requirements that you're going to need for silver okay the, the message that you're receiving is basically letting you know, hey, I'm, you're gonna resubmit this again, so yep. it's gonna have to be re-reviewed. It's not gonna be automatically approved. Okay. So you're gonna wanna change the, the uh, no, you're not gonna wanna change the requested points, but it's just letting you know, like, hey, when you submit this, it's going to have to go through another round of approval before being uh, awarded points for certification again. Okay, so then those points will automatically be forwarded over to silver or how, how will that be? How will I see the results of the resubmission? So that action totals uh, box, do you see that in the bottom of the calculator yes. where my mouse is scrolling? Yes. So that will actually keep track of all your completed, approved, must revised and planned actions. Okay. And they will okay. be updated as you mark them completed and as you acquire the point okay. totals. 
And our okay. calculator is really smart. So when it lets you know, or when it hits those approvals or uh, certification criteria, yep. it's already gonna submit your application for that level of certification. Okay, okay, so Allie gave me the right answer. I just needed a deeper understanding of the right answer. Thank you both. <laughs> no problem. Before I continue, does anybody else have any questions? Okay, moving on. So like I said before, in order to uh, edit the action submission, you're gonna wanna click the title of the action submission. <clears throat> There's a couple of boxes that are really uh, not explained in the action submission of each action. And I just wanna bring it to people's attention, especially with people that have multiple users on their application. Um, the action status drop down menu is really great for when you're working with multiple users because you're able to set actions as they are being finished or completed within the program. So let's say you're a community that is planning to complete an action but doesn't have all of the documentation, you can set the action to planned. Um, if your community isn't really thinking about completing the action at all in our program, you can mark the action unplanned. Um, if you have all of the documentation done and you have the action completed, you can mark the action completed. Um, it, again, it really helps kind of keep track of what's being done on your application, especially if you have more than one hand that's actually overseeing it. <clears throat> um, and I've gotten this question before, so I would want to include it in this presentation. Um, the requested points drop down menu is specifically for you guys. Um, when you complete an action, you're going to want to tally up all the points that are involved in every sub action. Um, and if you're unsure of the points or even what to submit, this little hyperlink where we have the action title will actually pull up the what to do and the write up of the action, where you'll be able to see um, the how to submit the action, um, the point values, and it makes a, understanding everything on terms of the action submission a little bit easier. Um, to up, the next thing I wanna talk about is uploading uh, supporting documentation because without supporting documentation, we really don't know if your community did anything in our program. Um, you can do this and it's, it's almost like how you would attach a file to an email. Uh, we have a browse button, which will then bring up your file selector. <clears throat> Which is, then, uh, we, uh, which is then followed by the document title bar. Um, if you want to rename your document prior to attaching it or uploading it to your application, you can rename it accordingly. And then when you're done, we ask that you press the attach button. <clears throat> at any point at all, so like let's say that you were previously in our program and of course our program actions change and they're updated frequently, um, and you just wanna keep the file, but you don't want to re-upload it. Um, we have added an edit title feature next to every file, <clears throat> which will then allow you to then rename your file as needed. Um, some tips to uploading support, uh, supporting documentation. Uh, the max file size is 32 megabytes. If you try to upload something that's greater, like even 32.05, you're gonna get either an error message or sorry, we couldn't upload this. Um, the max file limit, which we haven't had people go over before, is 20. <clears throat> In terms of uh, the differences between PowerPoints and PDFs, we do prefer PDFs, but you're able, if you're able to submit a PowerPoint, that's okay as well. <clears throat> we also accept PDFs, Docs, DocXs, Excel spreadsheets, and of course, your usual picture formats. Um, and then when you're submitting supporting documentation, it does help to name those documents after the action or sub action you're submitting for followed by what the file is, is um, actually. Um, so, you know, for uh, reasons of example, let's say you are submitting a Brownfields inventory. Um, I, as me being the website user would upload the file as 2.1.1 followed by Brownfields inventory. It's just a way not only for your users to understand what's already in the action submission. It also help reviewers when it comes time to look at the documentation as well. 
And I, I really hate to be that elementary middle school computer teacher, but like I always feel like I have to say this to people. Um, we have a save action submission at the button at the top and bottom of every action submission web page. Please, please, please save your work when you do any, any editing, whether that's uploading documents, changing any of the drop down menus, editing any of the fields that we have in the action submission. Um, I can't imagine how you would feel after spending hours and hours on your application and things didn't get put uh, put on correctly because you know the save button wasn't pressed. Um, so that was a really big section. Uh, I'm going to open it up to some questions now before I move on. Um, I really look forward to hearing what you guys have to say, if you guys have any. So this is Catherine in West Hartford. I have a question um, about how your preferred <laughs> method for files. So like if we're working on an action and we have you know both a resolution and then an article or an inventory document and stuff like that, um, I've, I've seen it both ways on the site and we haven't done this for about three years, but do you prefer to have it all for, for one action or sub action? Do you prefer to have it all combined into one PDF if possible? Or would you like kind of, I've seen people do kind of an overview and then list the documents that support that and then upload you know, like the resolution separately and, uh, you know, a WeHawk article separately. So what's the preferred method? Combine it all into one PDF for that sub action or, you know, have these separate documents um, titled by the, act, the sub action number, but, but uploaded separately. Thanks for the question, Catherine. I don't want to speak for all of my colleagues. So Jess, if I'm wrong, please let me know. Um, I believe, and I hate to be wishy-washy too, it's really up to the preference of the town. If the town finds it easier to provide and make a little work update or uh, to rope all of the material that they have and combine like a little review sheet to let you know the reviewer know where certain uh, things are in the submission, that's awesome. But if you're also, if you're working with multiple users, I understand if like trying to compile all of that into one document is really tedious. So just submitting it individually is fine too. Um, like I said before, it probably would be helpful to just uh, name each file after the sub action you're submitting for, followed by what the document is specifically. Just so, like I said, your users know what's going on in the application as well as the reviewers. Did that help? So I guess it's either or, whatever makes yes, sense. Exactly. It, it's really your preference. That's what I'll say. Jess, am I wrong? You are not. <laughs> awesome. Um, any other questions before I continue? All right, let's go on to section three. And section three is really cool because that's showing people how to add a municipal user. And that's for when, you know, you have, you want to have more than one pe person overseeing your account. Um, and you can also delineate the level of use that they actually have on your application as well. And I'll actually show you this going forward. <clears throat> so the first thing that you want to do is you want to go back to your municipal dashboard. Again, you want to go to either my account and click the first option that says municipal dashboard or to the top right where we have the municipal dashboard next to the sign out button. And you're going to want to find your town again. Um, again, if you can't find your town, info at sustainablect.org or my personal email. And you're, to, and you're going to see those four options again. You're going to want to go to the third option arrow where it says manage municipal users. And you want to give that a click for me. So when you scroll down to the manage municipal users page, you're going to see this uh, menu box. <clears throat> And the only thing you really want to concern yourself at this point, if you're a municipal user is in adding a municipal user is the bottom box. And the bottom box allows you to add an email, define the role of the user that you wish to add. And then when you finally finish those two boxes, you can add the user. At any point in all, you have municipal users who have emails that are changing or, you know, they leave your town and you want to remove them from the account you can use the update and remove buttons accordingly. 
<clears throat> I do want to give you guys a little debrief on municipal user roles. Um, we do note this on the website, but it is just great to go through, you know, when we have everybody on board. Um, the the highest form of municipal user, I guess, in the hierarchical structure is municipal owners. They can add and remove other owners and contributors. Um, we have municipal contributors who may add other contributors, but who cannot remove users from the municipality. Um, contributors and owners can also do work on the application. <clears throat> and viewers who can actually view your application, but they are not allowed to make any ad uh, additional edits and they can't add anyone else to the application. Um, so if you have organizations that really um, that you would really like to know about uh, the, what you're doing in your town, uh, but you don't want to give them access to all of the sensitive information that you may have on your application, you can make them viewers. <clears throat> um, so this kind of associates the idea that when you um, add a user and they haven't created an account with Sustainable CT, they're going to receive an invitation to uh, be linked to your municipal dashboard and to create an account. Um, this goes the same for when you're creating an account with Sustainable CT and you didn't receive the email to confirm your account. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is check your spam folders. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do if you don't see that email there is in, uh, email us at info at sustainablect.org. And then again, if nobody's gotten back to you in the next couple of days, my personal email. <clears throat> Again, uh, the name of the community that you would like to be linked to, too, please include that. And it also, again, wouldn't it hurt to include your sustainability team leader, just to let them know that, you know, again, this is something that you would like to do. Um, so that was basically adding a municipal user in a nutshell. Does anybody have any questions? I, I think I might get a couple after this one. If not, that's okay, though. No, nope, no, nope. man, you guys are website savants. All right, I'm gonna move on. This is gonna be more of like the, uh, the tools that you could potentially use to probably help yourself achieve certification or if you're looking for some examples on how to achieve certification, this will help you as well. Um, so the next thing that I wanna suggest or uh, lead you to is ac accessing a certification report. This is a really cool feature, especially if you want to see what different towns in your community who are certified are doing. You can do this by first accessing our participating communities map. Um, you can do this by visiting the about section that's at the top of the sustainable CT website. And then in that section, clicking participating communities. <clears throat> From there, you'll be directed to our participating communities map. And the cool thing about this map, it provides all the information on all of our registered and certified communities in our program um, and a bunch of different filtering options, which I'll get to in a little bit. <clears throat> However, if you're looking for a specific town that you would want to find an example from or you just want to see their certification report, you're going to want to click list view. Um, from here, I use Stonington as an example. Um, you can alphabetically find all the towns that are listed in our program. And then from there, when you click on Stonington or the link of the town that you would want to see, you're actually going to have their little dialog box pop up on the participating communities map with a couple of different options. So to view the contact information for the municipal, I think, owners of the account, you can view their profile for the town but you can also view the certification report for the town of their um, certification uh, of their most recent certification. So when you click view report, you'll actually be brought to their certification report, which you can then download and have a copy of for future use. Um, and the cool thing is the certification report not only provides a snapshot of uh, when they were certified and their total points, but as well as the files and anything that they use to achieve certification as well. So like, let's say you are a community that wants to find information related to a specific action or even a specific geographical location in, in your, um, around you. <clears throat> you can filter the participating communities, not only by certification status or registration status, you can then sort them by completed action 
and you can even sort them by location if you have any like crosstown rivalries with anybody you're in the same county with. It's pretty cool to see that. <clears throat> um, so that was pretty fast. I'm more than happy to sh demo that um, participating communities map section if anybody would want me to. Uh, but first, again, any questions if needed? Hi, uh, this is the other Catherine in West Hartford. <laughs> hi, Catherine. Um, hi, nice to see you again, Thorn. I uh, can you fill? Did you just say can you filter? Say we're going for a certain action point, and you want to see the documentation another town has done. Can you filter for the action point and see which towns have done it? Yeah, so if you want, I could actually stop my share and I'm going to go to the sustainable CT website to show you guys because why not? So let's see. Do, do, do. So I'm on an action submission right now, but I'm actually going to want to go back to the home page. You all can see my screen, right? Nods of approval if you can. Okay, good. So I'm going to go back to the home page. So I'm at the home page. I'm going to click on the about section. And then I'm going to click on participating communities. Um, so Catherine, what, what, what's a specific action that you would actually want to search for? Um, say, uh, okay, how about 9.3? 9.3, so category nine, strategic materials management. We're going to give that a click. And then where we see 9.3, we're going to click the checkbox next to it. And then we're going to go up to the top where it says filter. And we're going to do that it at click. the same time. <laughs> filter, OK. So the computer is going to do its little magic for me. It's do its little dance. And it's actually going to present you with all of the communities who are bronze and silver certified that have completed this action and received points for this action. Okay. Um, I can't guarantee you that it's um, it's going to be a range of years, so it's going to be from 2018 to 2020. Um, so feel free to use the information as needed. Okay, great. That was really helpful. Awesome. Does anybody else have any questions? Because I think we're nearing the end of the right, nearing the end of the presentation. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. All right, I'm here in silence, so I think that means we're good. Thank just... you. That was fantastic. This is Margaret. Um, just being able to uh, see how to access what other towns have been doing, and um, it's really helpful. Thanks. No problem, Margaret. Um, I believe that was the actually the end of our presentation, so I'm just going to pop like this little thing here. Just thank you guys for just taking the time and bearing with me to understand a little bit more about the website. Um, if you want, I do have one more thing that I want to show you guys if you know I don't want to over overwhelm anybody with information, but I think it could be a really great way for you guys to find some really great success stories in this program. Hey, Torin, one last thing. I, I mean, you said on this screen, you're you, you can't tell what year it is. Are you planning to add that at some point, like in another column, what year the action was from? Because that would be helpful because you know, as the action changed and the documentation requirements change, it would be useful to look at the more current ones. That's a great question, Catherine. And honestly, I think we've actually had some comments on this page from a, a fellow that's actually recently been um, looking at our website as well. I see you're smiling. Um, but uh, we like to say we have our web developers, cast iron coatings, who handle a lot of the programming work that are associated with this. And we have monthly check-ins with them. Yeah. Um, but these are what these coffee hours are for. I want to hear more input on what could be useful on the website. I will take what you're saying into consideration because this isn't the only time I've heard this. So now this is twice. I think our developers and our colleagues probably want to hear um, a, a potential editor, a potential fix to the map. So thank yeah. you for mentioning it. And I'm sure you've also heard too, but I'm sure it's been commented before. When you click in, you get like the full certification report. So you have to like scroll all the way through. I, um, to the action you're looking at, right, right, as well. Right, and it can be really tedious. So maybe, maybe the best way to view certain things is to view success stories. And maybe this tutorial will solve, smooth some things yeah. over. Yeah, I know so, that it's probably a big fix, so, but it's just a comment. 
Yeah. So you know what, while we're here, let me show you guys how to see some of the success stories or use the success stories feature in our program. So I'm going to stop my share and I'm actually going to start a new one back on the sustainable CT website. And I'm actually going to go to our actions page. So going back to our homepage, if anybody hasn't been there before, you can get there by going to actions and certifications, which will then bring up another menu while my computer does a dance, where you can go to our actions and you just click on the actions button or the learn more button to go and have a almost like a blank slate. Um, so let's say you are a community that really needs a lot of help. I, I hate be, to use the brownfields category, but it's like always the first one that I remember. Let's say you really want to find a great example of a success story in the brownfields category. You're going to want to click on the action. And in this left hand column, it, this is new and it's all the way at the bottom. So maybe we need to bump it up a bit. You're going to see CT success stories. And when you click on this feature, you're actually going to see all of the communities who've completed this uh, work. And when you click on these little hyperlinks, so like, let's say I wanted to see Stratford submission for 1.1 or 2.1, I can then click on it and it will then bring me to 2.1 of Stratford submission. So maybe that's a little bit of a way of a streamlined way for you, Catherine, to see some of the actions in our program without having to actually find them in the certification report. Because I agree with you, it gets so tedious after a while. And that has the year also. That The advantage there is it also gives the year that it was certified. So again, yes, feel free. This is just another tool within our action write-ups that you know communities can use to just make uh, approaching some of these actions towards certification a lot easier. Sorry, um, Torin, can you can you just uh, show the steps that oh that you took? Oh to yeah, that? sure, no problem. Again, um, let me go back here. So I just just where you started, I was. All right. Uh, should I go right back from the beginning, Catherine? Yeah. Um, uh, well, just where you access that from. Oh, Connecticut okay. Success Stories was at the bottom of. Yep. Everywhere. So I went to my actions page and I made sure that I clicked on the action I wanted to see. Okay. And then there's two scrolling menus, one on the right, one on the left. You're going to want to use the scroll on the left to go all the way down to the bottom where it says CT success stories. And okay. then you want to click. And okay. It should bring you all the way down on the right hand side. Okay, got it. So that was just another little nugget of information that you guys can use. Um, would anybody else have any other questions related to the certification or uh, the website, sorry. <laughs> No. Well, everyone, um, I've provided you as much basic knowledge about the website as I can. I had, a, I had one more. Sorry, oh, I was sorry, on Catherine, mute. Sorry, I didn't see you. <laughs> no, I was on mute. Um, and I stepped away for a second. So I don't know whether you showed the boxes where you do uh, new action credit and, and rolling action credit. And then I think some people have, there's a dialogue, there's like a text box below that where people have been putting information in. I guess, um, I guess just an example of kind of what you would wanna see in the box um, if, if, you're, if it's for rolling credit. Yeah, great question because I didn't go over that. So let me pull up another screen share, my apologies. All right, so I'm going to go back to the home page. Let me let me pull up an application too. All right, 
So I'm going to our test town application. This is almost like where we do all of our website configuring. If we have an update, I'd like to mess around with it using a, a fake municipal account. So I'm going to click on a random action. Uh, let's go back to 2.1 because why not? Now, Catherine, you said you want below the submission. You said the time frame for credit for past action. Well, if you can just walk down all the, I'd love to walk down all those little dialog boxes because I, I think people are, are using them in different ways. So I'm not, I just want to make sure I'm putting the right thing in the text boxes that are there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I completely understand. Um, so the submission information box is basically the box that you're going to be using yep. to tell reviewers what you're submitting for. Um, I've put some examples right here, but you're going to just want to, when you're submitting uh, for an action or sub action, you're going to want to note the sub action you're submitting for um, and a brief title of either the action or sub action you're submitting, whether that's, you know, submit Brownfields inventory, Brownfields inventory, um, and then followed by the number of points that the town is requesting for that action or sub action as well. <clears throat> The submit supporting documents box is basically just a rundown of what I tried to explain in my little tips thing. It's a lot more elongated than I tried to explain, um, but that is followed by the different options that we have. We have the document title box that you can use to rename your files before uploading. We have the choose file box, which will bring up your file explorer that you can use to attach your files. And then we have ultimately the attach file button will upload your files for you. And like I said before, it's best when you're submitting files to, to rename them on sustainable CT after the sub action and then the name of the, uh, the sub action that you're submitting for as well. <clears throat> and let's say that uh, I didn't mention this before. Let's say you have a file that you no longer want on your application. If you head over to the delete column next to the file that you wanted to get rid of, just hit that X and you're going to get rid of the file. <clears throat> The documentation details box is really interesting. So let's say you have a really elaborate piece of documentation that you want sustainable CT to look at, but you want to, them to look at a specific page for the certain sub action you wish to submit for. You can note in the documentation box to go, hey, I want you to go to see page five of our report so you could actually see a copy of our Brownfields map or see page 10 so you could actually see a copy of all the, uh, of the, the inventory of all the Brownfields that we have in our town. So I have a question on that. Um, so if we've submitted like a whole package PDF with an overview sheet, and in that overview, we say like, you know, attached is the inventory, please see page five. If, yep, if yep. that's in the PDF, do we need to put it here as well? Or can we just ignore that? Nope. If you have the uh, overview worksheet, um, it looks like this file isn't, or this field isn't required for towns to complete for submission. So that's okay. not needed, especially if you guys are submitting your own like review sheet of like pointing to reviewers what you're actually, what's uh, is actually going to be in your action submission. Yeah, that's kind of how we're doing it. There's like a cover page for each one, um, you know, with bullet points for the documents that are attached. And if there's a page, it, it would be referenced in that cover sheet, not here. So I just wanted to make sure that's okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. Jess, am I wrong? Nope, I think you could do that. That sounds great. So the whole point of this box is that we're seeing what you want us to see. So as long as you're telling us exactly what we're looking at, um, we're good. Yep. Okay. Torin, when you said um, to rename the, just looking up above that a little bit, to rename it with the action point, I don't see that like Brownfield's inventory has the action point. It. Yeah, it did see the good catch, Catherine, because I don't necessarily practice what I preach. Okay. Um, I'm, this is my test town account, gotcha. and I kind of go in and submit as needed. But, but, that, yes, but that's, that's where you would condemn me for not renaming my documents properly. No, no, not calling you out, Torn. <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> um, Catherine Divini, am I good to move on? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I think the next box that Catherine really wanted to have explained is the time frame for credit box. So the time frame for credit box is really interesting because it's something new that we've added this year. 
And uh, Jess, please feel free to tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but for the certain sub action, if you are new to the program and you haven't completed the action at all, it's going to be considered new action credit, um, which is what you're going to put next to the sub action you're submitting for, followed by the date in which the action was completed, I believe. <clears throat> Now, let's say you are a town who was previously certified in our program and is resubmitting this uh, sub action or action uh, for credit. You're going to want to say in the sub action or action you're submitting for that it is rolling credit, um, followed by the steps that you've taken to necessarily achieve or update the sub action that you're submitting for. Um, it, it would be great to include the uh, dates in which you were updating or reviewing the action, um, as well as the date in which the original action was completed as well. Um, I hope that explains a lot. Please feel free to tell me to reword it if it sounds a little confusing. So I do have a question. This is Margaret um, <clears throat> about that. So certified for bronze. And my understanding is that all those bronze points carried up towards silver. So do we need to do this box for all of our carried forward points, even if we haven't done anything to them? Um, help me understand so, that. Margaret, uh, you're a special case because you got certified bronze in 2021, and I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, but I think you might be going for silver in 2021 as well for the summer deadline. Yep. So if that's the case, you do not need to change any of the time frame for credits because it's still the same calendar year of certification. Uh, However, if you're using your bronze credit and you want to see if it still applies in future years, you'll need to look at this box again. And it's possible that that works. If it was new this year, it might still be new next year. It depends. Okay. It's possible that it will trigger that rolling status. And okay. the difference between rolling and new is um, it's really just a point in time. So looking at the year you want to get certified, so 2021, it would be three years prior to that year. So that would be January 1, 2018. So whether you're certified or not, any work that's happened between January 1, 2018 and, and the certification of 2021, which is August 24th, and if you're still with me in all these numbers, kudos to you. Uh, that's new. And if it happened before <laughs> December 31st, 2017, then it, it could be rolling or it could be ineligible for points. And we've spelled that out in all the action, okay. sub action areas and the action description itself. And if it is eligible for rolling at that point, here's where you would include um, a statement on the date and how, how it's still rolling. And it might be that you can see here, um, actually these are all new, but if it was rolling, you could put in a statement on rolling. And if there was anything that needed to be attached, you would just attach it up above, or you would make a statement that, that meets the requirements that we've outlined in that timeline for credit document that we have attached to each action description. Okay. I hope that wasn't confusing, but you're good, you're good for 2021. Margaret, um, future years, you just have to take a look at this and it okay. could be okay or it might need a little tweaking. Thanks. And this is, this, is, this is probably a great thing we can have our um, fellow look over for us right before we hit submit. <laughs> exactly, yep. <laughs> Thomas and Sean, you're on it. <laughs> um, so I have a couple more fields. I know we're almost at time. So if anybody that does have to bounce off, I completely understand. Um, thank you for attending. Um, but if you guys do want to stay on, I'm more than happy to keep going and keep answering any questions you have about the website. Um, this has been awesome. So I really appreciate you all for actually attending today. Thank you. Um, are we good with the time frame? Before I move on, are we good with the time frame for credit for past action box? No. Yeah. Good. Okay. So the next field that's really important is the partners field. Um, so if you worked with any organization or any group that, you know, helped you achieve, achieve the action or sub action for certification, um, we want to know about it. Um, so please feel free to let us know 
by sub action or action how the group or organization assisted you. Um, if you had no groups assist you, we highly recommend you just put none in the box because this field is required to complete for certification for 2021. Um, and we really want towns to kind of, we really want to communicate with you guys and understand who's helping you guys achieve these actions as well. <clears throat> now, let's say um, the town really um, a, achieved like a really amazing and monumental feat when achieving some of these actions and you really want to know the or you want sustainable CT staff and reviewers to know the process it takes to achieve some of these actions. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you put that information in the additional information box. Um, this will show up on your certification report, but it, it provides users a narrative of how you approach the action and how your, uh, your sustainability team completed the action as well. So again, I guess I get a little confused whether you want that information in this box or, you know, again, if we're providing an overview and an explanation of the action, I guess, is it either or we could put it in the PDF or in the box? Catherine, again, it's either or, it's up to your preference. Okay. If it's already in the uh, submission to begin with, I'm not gonna say that you double count it or you know waste time on you know inputting again in the additional information page. Um, but it, again, it does help uh, you know, if you, if you don't wanna do it in your action submission, this is just another way that you can put that narrative and include that narrative in your action submission. And I guess when you look at people's reports, the the boxes show up there before you actually have to click into a PDF, right? So I, right. I guess it would be front and center, but um, sometimes it's easier to edit and not lose information in a, in a Word document rather than on a screen um, where you can't really, yeah, I guess that's why I was do, we were doing it in, in the overview because it was easier to edit and, and save and rework before you hit submit. Right. It's, it's not something that's required. So yeah, feel free to do whatever's easier for the town at that point. You know, Catherine, why couldn't, um, why couldn't, if you wanted to put something in the box, just say details in overview PDF. Right. Right. Yeah, that is that true. Tells the reviewers when they look at that box. Oh yeah. Okay. I know where all that stuff is. That is true. That is true. Um, was that uh, uh, was that enough explanation? Um, I think we have the last field that we have, and that's it. Perfect. Thanks. All right. So the last field, which is also required for um, certification to complete now, um, is understanding the role of sustainable CT. Um, this is a new question or thing we've added to each action okay. submission, which is going to be used as almost like a, a data collecting point. Hey. Um, oh, hello. You're good, Tor. Keep going. Okay. Um, it, uh, this understanding the role of sustainable CT box really helps us understand um, whether the sub actions or actions you completed um, were because of our influence, uh, were because of outside influence, or if it was because if it was previously planned, and then all of a sudden, you know, are the progress in our program actually pushed it over the finish line? We want to know about it. Um, so please, uh, for each sub action and action that you uh, include in your submissions, uh, please note whether those were previously planned, whether they were, you know, whether they had no influence or whether they were a new action that were inspired by our program. Um, so I think that's, I think the only thing too that you might want to see at the bottom of every action, I don't have any feedback is the reviewer feedback. And this is where you would see all of the current feedback that you have for each action you've submitted in the current certification cycle or the most recent certification cycle. Um, so that is almost it for the explanation of all the fields in each action submission. Um, I really would love to hear any other questions that you guys have. Um, Jane from West Haven, um, if you previously submitted something and you have an updated version um, going with brownfield mapping, um, let's say you submitted one that was done in 2015 um, and then you re redid it in 2020, um, would you delete the previous one 
or still leave it there for history, especially if it uh, um, was used in your original certification? So that's a great question, Jane. Um, it's basically up to you guys. I would recommend deleting the file, but the certificate, uh, because the certification report that you guys previously submitted is on file with Sustainable CT, if you go to certific the certification report, and you can access that map as well. Um, however, I totally understand if you want to re-download it personally and have it and save it as a copy on a flash drive so you can have for future archiving purposes. Um, the certification report only archives certified, the most recent certified data. Um, I will actually, there is a website, there is a link to our website that actually has all of our archived applications. Um, but we recommend too, if there was work that was recorded for a community that wasn't certified that you do actually um, upload it to like a personal flash drive or something for your own personal record keeping. Yeah, it makes life a lot easier for the reviewers if, if stuff you don't want us to look at is removed just for, you know, just to avoid any confusion. So if you're comfortable getting rid of old stuff, we would love it if you would. So we recognize that it's 11.06. So if anyone wants to pop off, please, uh, please feel free. Just want to let everyone know that next month we're shifting gears a little bit and our coffee hour is going to be on a Tuesday. Tuesday at 10, um, I think it's a Tuesday, it's July 20th, and that's going to be about um, bringing innovative and varied sort of community gardens. So it's garden time, and we wanted to, to emphasize that and highlight that. So we're all, talking all about community garden spaces. We've got a great speaker lined up, and we're looking forward to seeing you there. But we'll give you information on the change. Your registration should still be Still be good and seamless, so have no fear about that. But if folks have any other questions, um, feel free to stay on the line and, and we'll answer whatever we can. But thank you all for joining us today. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, Stephanie, how's it going? <laughs> Hi, actually it might be just too late. I mean, I was waving my hand to say I had a question, not to say goodbye, but it looks like it was the, maybe I won't say goodbye. Um, we could go over this some other time though, but I'm really confused by when you go to your certification, uh, so when you go to your, um, sorry, your account, and all the way on the right hand side, you see that little box and I'm not sure why it's not loading. Right. Okay, it says action totals. I'd an action and certification criteria. Those blue boxes on the right, I don't understand those. I just cannot read those. And I don't know if it's just me being a dummy or they really are confusing. Yeah, you know, Stephanie, let me actually bring it up. Let me bring the calculator up so we could actually mess around with it for a little bit. Why not? And I don't mind if we do this another time because it is late and people probably, and there might be other people who want to actually see this. I might not be the only person struggling with that. So I don't mind if we push it forward. The other thing, um, I, it's I'd it's like to see it too. So that's okay, so yeah. why don't we do this another time? And then the other thing is, again, it could be just me being the dummy, but, I find it really confusing when you go into um, the examples and you see, for example, um, it seems to always come up with um, the example of um, the first one, submission information. For example, 2.1.1 Brownfield Infantry, uh, 10 points. Um, this could be really cumbersome for you to do this, this request, but if the examples could be more in line with that particular action, it'd be less confusing. Like it's a little bit easier for me now, but those people who are new, like brand new or people who are still kind of new like me, um, it's just a little confusing because it's just, um, it's irrelevant to that particular action, that example. So again, it could be really cumbersome asking you to do that, but. That's just something I just wanted to share as a, as a user of the site. Yeah, so um, I will take that into consideration, especially with our web developers. So they actually created those instructions for us in the back end of our website. 
Um, and those are actually universally applied to each action. So I don't know if we could actually integrate a custom set of instructions for each action. That would be really cool, um, but that might cost some time and some money. And I definitely that that involves some higher ups and some checking in with people. I can't I can't just you know give everybody. I wish I could give everybody what they want, <laughs> but at the end of the day, that that would cost a lot of money. And I I, I and sustainable CT would be broke at that point. <laughs> okay. So yes, do you think there'd be time um, next month just to spend a few minutes on those those blue boxes on the on the side? Then the ones I brought up just a few moments ago. If if you want, I can email you and Catherine to set up a time where we just have a little run through of that little blue box and understand it and have some time to go through like a little tutorial of it. I've done that with Catherine before, right? Yes. Um, so it, 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 I don't mind taking time out of my schedule during the week to do that. Okay, yeah, it's whatever serves. I mean, if it serves a greater group to do the whole thing then, but otherwise, yeah, maybe with Catherine, um, we can set up a time. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'll be sure to email the group after we get off this phone call or after the Zoom call. Okay. Um, is there anything else that I can discuss or ease anyone's pangs about the website um, before I press end? It has been a lovely journey with all of you today. I really appreciate it, by the way. Thanks, Tom. That was great. Bye. Bye, Catherine. All right. So it doesn't seem like we have any other questions coming through. So with that, I'm going to swing my gavel and call this coffee hour adjourned. Um, just to let everyone know, we're going to have a, a recording of this so everyone can see um, all of the questions and all the answers that we had during this presentation. Um, so don't feel like you had to take any crazy tedious notes for it. Um, thank you again for everyone that attended and uh, looking forward to seeing you during next coffee hour. Bye.